Hello and welcome to another edition of Canotillo Combos, the official Canotillo ISD podcast. I'm Gustavo Revelle, the Director of Communications, and of course we have with us our esteemed leader. Esteemed. I changed I went, it up I a little went bit. From fearless to esteemed. Well, I, I sense a little fear in you now, Doc. <laughs> yeah, Halloween. Halloween <laughs> And, uh, and, and we have Laura Caballero with us as well, as always, in the control booth over here. I want to co- uh, compliment our calendar oh, people. That, that's smart. Julie Melendez. Julie Melendez, a.k.a. the Hispanic Titanic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was smart to give, you know, professional development and let the kids be off right after Halloween. I, I have received zero complaints about having right. off on, uh, <laughs> on a Wednesday. On a Wednesday, what am I gonna do? <laughs> what about daycare? Where are they gonna go? You know. So, so yes, we we were recording on Wednesday, November first, the day after uh, uh, Halloween, and kids are off today. Most of our kids, those kids at Trans Mountains, are always uh, are always on. But uh, they're off. Our, our teachers are doing staff development today. They're in training. Uh, we gave uh, we gave the kids a day off. It's awesome. It kind of gives that that hump day, that break. That like hump day, and you know, parents have to deal with all the sugar rushes. Yes, going that, on that we don't have to deal with. Yeah, <laughs> they're on your taxes. I didn't tell you to have them. That's what I always tell them. But like, we need hey, more want, kids. <laughs> you want to have kids, right? Yeah, but we need more. But we need stop, more. Stop, stop, stop going to EPISD. <laughs> Come over here. <laughs> stay, stay here. We have better, we have better academics. We do, we do, and, and 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 what we don't have, Doc, is perhaps better looking buildings, right? And and we we've, we've known that. That's no secret. We're doing that four letter word again. We're 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 not yet. We're not doing that four letter word. We're not yet. We got we we need to first assess what's uh, what's out there. What oh. people think of, of our buildings. We we've you know it's no secret the the public has. Uh, shut down a bond election twice, um, but it's also no secret that our that our buildings are not in good shape. Yeah, you know when you hear like someone like CMS and and their science labs, and here you, they're uh, um, steam, right? right? Science, technology, engineering, arts and math. But yet they have no water. Yeah. No water in their laboratories. It's it's you know, and, and again, thank you to Mr. Jones and his staff. And, you know, they, they do the best for what they have, but we, we can give our kids better. Yeah, definitely, definitely. We, are, our teachers are expected and they're delivering 21st century instruction in 20th century facilities. Yeah, well, how old are, how old? On average, uh, more than 25 years old. Some of them are over 50 years old. But uh, you know, obviously, some of our schools like Las Vegas brings the the average down. But you know, if you drive around, you'll see our schools were built in the 90s, 80s, and in the case of CMS, in the in the 70s. Yeah, even the high school, the high school is not set up in that. It's still set up in that old Happy Days traditional setting. You know, the Happy Days is probably way before your time. With oh, I know, I know Happy Days. You know, Richie hey. Cunningham. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's there. It's from Laura's time. No, she yeah, won't know it. Yeah. <laughs> she did She wouldn't even know. Uh, but but you know, uh, you know, our our facilities personnel does a beautiful job of trying to maintain those buildings functional and safe. Uh, so kudos to them. But but there's only so much you can do. There's only so much makeup you can put on a pig, right? Yeah. Uh, and and our schools, you know, CMS. You mentioned it. You know. You walk in there and, and kids are happy, kids are doing what they're supposed to do. But but the reality is that those classrooms are not equipped to, to provide the type of instruction that's happening inside. Well, even when you drive up Bosque, right? Yeah. And I, again, when I think about our last bond and we were just gonna build there, and, and the staff was saying, that, hey, we want a new school, but not here. Yeah. You know, we, we need to be somewhere else just because of the traffic. Going up Bosque is horrible in the morning, horrible in the afternoon. It's just not an ideal um, location for a middle school, and, and not just not just that, but you know, being realistic, given the growth patterns in our district, our population growth is elsewhere. You know, so we need to be strategic about it. Uh, you know, we have a middle school issue here in the school district, and and our middle schools are great. There's tons of pride there, and and that's awesome. 
but geographically they're situated way too close to each other. They're situated in, in, in the part of the district that's not growing as fast as the rest of the school district. So, so they're not doing, um, they're not meeting their goal of, of, of being neighborhood schools. And, and we live in a society of convenience. Right. Think of uh, Instacart. Yeah. Uber. Um, think of uh, what else can you do? That it's just people want to pay. They'll pay to have people shop for them. Yeah. They'll pay for um, Uber Eats, yeah. DoorDash. You know, I want to go get my coffee in the morning. You know, they'll pay that extra how much it costs to get Dunkin' delivered. But, you know, Taco Bell. So. Curbside. curbside. Everything. Yeah. yeah. So, and that's convenient. And the same thing. I mean, all of that there. My kids went there, but it's not convenient for where the growth is. The growth is on the other side. Yeah. And that's where those parents, out of convenience, just say hey, it's easier to go to Brown. The, yeah, the school right down the road. Yeah. Where I don't have to cross the Talbot. The traffic's bad and all that. So I think that's that's the um, the world that we're in today mm-hmm. about where our schools are situated. And it's not convenient to drive up Bosque. You know, why don't we have it somewhere in our easy access, accessibility I mean parents can go in and out still go to work boom we got that you know that yeah. highway coming through there and and on top of that too dog I mean curb appeal says a lot about pride says a lot about you know um, retention of students you know we have a retention problem in the district we have thousands yeah. of students that are supposed to be in our schools that go go to uh, other school districts uh, and, and I would venture to say that a lot of it has to do with A, convenience, and B, curb appeal. And facilities. I mean, we're the yeah. only, think of our athletics, and Coach Brooks says it, we're the only one 5A high school that, that, that we compete against that don't have lights for on their baseball fields. Baseball fields, fields yeah. You yeah. know, it's just, it, it's not, we need to, again, come together as a community and look you know, and they're really not wants. They're just, hey, let's get up to 2023. You know, by, time we, by, by the time we do 2023, we're going to be looking at 2030. Yeah. Gonna, you know, it's and, a never-ending game. And, and it's going to change. Yeah. And that's okay. That's part of education. And, and as you know, you know that's, that's how we, we can afford to build yeah. you know, through that four-letter word. Now, yeah. I won't say it. No. It rhymes with yeah. bond. It yeah. with cond. <laughs> Rise with Don. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, Doc, and, and and to that effect, we, we want to make sure that the public is uh, uh, aware of what's going on. We want to hear from them. We want to hear from our students, our parents, our taxpayers, our alumni. Uh, you know, just anyone in the community. Uh, we want to hear what their what their priorities are for our facilities. Um, and, and to that effect. We've launched a survey, and, and anyone can participate. It's on our website. Uh, it will be on our social media. It's also on our social media. And everyone attached to the school district should have received an email by the time this airs um, uh, with a link to the survey. Um, and this survey is pretty open-ended. We just want them to tell us what is your priority for facilities in, in kind of here. What, what, what are the needs as we What go. are the needs? And, and um, the cool thing about this survey, uh, we're using a tool called Thought Exchange. And, and it asks you to do two things. First, tell us something, right? Tell us what your priorities are. And once you do that, it's going to guide you to other people's answers. And it's going to ask you whether you agree or disagree. And we ask you to go about, um, you know, clicking through them, giving rating answers based on, on, on what other people are saying. And that's going to help us determine uh, a much broader, a much sort of um, uh, wide idea of what priorities are for facilities in the school district. Yeah. You know, and, and it weeds out sort of outliers, and it really groups uh, common ideas for us to consider. Yeah, I think you, you need to, based on the data, what does the data say? Like, we're growing. You see that interstate going through, and I-10, again, it's... It's been an inconvenience, but that's part of growth. You're going to be dealing with those struggles, and, and you look at as 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 you go forward. 
better things are gonna happen because of the highway, because yes. of the expansion, because people are gonna be easier to get to downtown to the work and come well, to El Paso. Well, and, and, and I hope people in this community understand that growth is a problem that many districts wish they had. You know, just next door to us, um, two school districts are struggling significantly because of, uh, you know, lots of enrollment because, you know, they, they're, they're landlocked and they don't see any growth. Uh, it's impacting their, their bottom line, it's impacting their budget, it's impacting the way they can well, serve it's students. Like, it's so. like any business, right? And we've looked at our, our um, staffing and our enrollment. Our enrollment is going down, but our staffing increased. So right. at some point as a business, you're going to have to reduce staff in order to meet what our current enrollment is. That's right. just the reality that we're in. You know, we, again, we're, we adopted a deficit budget. You know, we gave raises because, we, again, we wanted to be, you know, competitive. competitive. We are starting teachers are starting off at 60000 I was looking at some um, taper reports, progress, and our teachers back in, what, 2017-18, the beginning teacher was making 48000 yeah, it's a significant increase. It is, you know, yeah. so, you know, we're, we're, we're trying to, but again, but we need our community to back us. You know, as we did the first report on uh, Monday, yes, uh, two days ago. Two days ago. Right, yeah. we're 96, we still have a superior rating in our finance, you know, kudos to our finance department and making sure they're safeguarding and serving and shaping our, the finances for the district, so. But, but you know, to that effect, it's, it, it you know, we've been pretty uh, vigilant with with the taxpayer money, uh, making do with what we have, which is not a lot. Uh, but there's going to come a time when we can't we can't afford it anymore, and well, we're going to have to make you know sacrifices. And everything's going to have to be on the table, like closing a school, yeah. just like our school district next door. They close schools. Yes. You know, the other school, other two, right? Yeah. They, they've all closed schools. Like that. Yeah. It's a pass when he's like to have Yeah, close schools. schools yeah. Right? Socorro keeps growing, but they have closed school, schools because there's no enrollment. People aren't there, and that's yeah. the fact of It's just yeah. a fact. It's not. And, 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 and here's our opportunity. The opportunity is we have the students within our district to populate, remain healthy, remain stable, and remain vibrant even. We just don't have the facilities to do it. Well, that's and that's where we're, we're, we're bleeding, right? We're yeah. bleeding on that side of the highway where parents are deciding not to bring their kids to school yeah. out of convenience, right? So, so, and when you have that and you're not willing to change your business model, if you're not willing to change your business model, you're gonna have to either close, close the school, and you're gonna have to adapt. And, and, and I don't want to. I think when I first got here, we proposed that to the existing board, and everyone held their little oh, keep my school open, and, and look where we are. So again, we're gonna have to be firm. And, yeah. And, and, and everything has to be on, on the table when it comes to a solid plan. Or we're gonna be like, um, what's what's that video store that closed? Blockbuster. Blockbuster. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You remember yeah, Black I remember. I don't even know what a VCR is. VHS. Be kind, rewind louder. <laughs> um, Be kind, rewind. But, but you know, so so to that end, we, we want to uh, start that conversation. And we're inviting you to please log on to uh, www.canotillo-isd.org. Click on the story with the facility survey and participate. Uh, our deadline is November 24th, uh, and, and we're gonna gather that information and then come back with even more information for the public and the, and the board and the district to begin a conversation about how we move forward with facilities and how we meet the needs and the wants of the school district and, and its people here. You know, and, and our, again, and our kids are still rocking it. Our teachers are still rocking yeah. it. You know, our quest, quest bridge. Yeah, we, we got great news this week. Uh, um, you know, last week we were able to celebrate two students from Northwest Early College High School that received Questbridge, uh, that became, were Questbridge finalists. Uh, Questbridge is a very prestigious uh, scholarship that 
pair students with four-year full-ride scholarships to universities like Princeton, Harvard, Tufts, USC, like all these high-end, you know, high-rigor universities. And it's very, very, very tough to make it as a finalist. We had two at Northwest, uh, where we only had one last year. And this year, we have five at Canotillo High School. So we are so proud and excited oh, wow. that Canotillo High School is also uh, in the mix here. Uh, you know, that's a lot of students that are buying for tons and tons of money for college in very prestigious universities. Yeah, I think also at our, our board honors, we had that one um, young lady who did research. Oh my God, yeah, April. Neuros. I can't even STEM remember it. Some, something very research in Seattle. <laughs> very elevated presentation. Yeah. And then we had those five, five students Four. that are working with with Congresswoman I, Escobar. You know, the most out of any high school in yeah. the region. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, there's tons of stuff uh, happening in every corner of the district. Great work by our students. Our students, our teachers are showing up. Our students, our teachers are delivering. It's up to us to deliver back to them, you know, with the facility. We need our community to show up. You know? And, and it's getting really disappointing. It's really getting when well, people come and, and why wouldn't you want new facilities for yeah. your kids, for the, for the future of this country? Yeah. That's just, uh, you know, I, I, and, I, and I would love to entertain that. If anybody wants to come on the air and say, I don't believe in the bomb because of this, this, and that, and... And, and you know, I and Come on. I think the main the main point of contention is taxes, and we understand that uh, uh, you know that times are, are difficult. But we've offered we've offered uh, pretty affordable solutions to this issue. Uh, our school district is growing, our tax base is growing, so the impact has been you know uh, well. I don't want to undermine you know people's ability to, to afford things. But what are you been, what are you eating a sandwich? What not ham? Bologna. <laughs> that's bologna. You know, that's a bologna. That's a bologna. I just made that word. Yeah, bologna. Yeah. Bologna <laughs> answer. Bologna. That's Western's. a bologna argument. Well, you know, but but it is an argument, right? And people 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 uh, uh, feel the that urge. We, you know, we've offered a no no tax increase bond. We've offered a minimal tax increase bond, um, and and we want people to consider that as well. We understand it's an investment, but it's an investment that's going to pay dividends, and it's an investment that is going to to really kickstart the conversation again about Canotillo being the district of the future here in El Paso. We are. I was at lunch the other day, and this 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 gentleman I was having lunch with said, "Hey, do you realize you're you're the best district in El Paso?" And then you know, someone yes. told me the other day, <laughs> and I know because we just continue to work. We continue to, to, to give our teachers the resources in the classroom. But like I think you said their classroom is 20th century, yeah. but we want to push it to the 21st century. And again, we're talking about the 21st century, 23 years. Yeah, right. We're, we're 23 years into the century and we're still teaching like, you know, it was the 1990s. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, especially at a school like CMS, I mean, if, if anyone hasn't been there, I welcome them to, to to call us and schedule a visit. Those classrooms are tiny, they're outdated, and teachers are doing miracles in there. Yeah, I mean, AMS también. AMS. Yeah. You know, my kids went to AMS, and the first time I went there, I was like, what? But again, it was, you know, it was the, the, the middle school of my, my two kids, and, and there's fantastic teachers there. Yeah. Fantastic. I think Miss Roach was the principal at the time and, and Miss Walker and you know, Coach Garcia and Coach Martin. Um Miss Miss English Miss who's the English teacher? She's yeah. awesome. She always wears colored hair. She's like fantastic. Yeah. Burnett, Miss Burnett. Oh Miss Burnett, yes. She taught yes. my daughter to do her English. I mean her writing and her journal. The high school Damien. So yeah. I mean, high school, you know, coming through. You saw it with the Quest Bridge and, and all these great things happening. Uh, so, so yes, please, uh, everybody, uh, go fill out that survey. Let us know, and, and we'll you, come back. Everyone has time on 
on Sunday because the Packers are two and five. So I know no one's watching mm-hmm. football on Sunday. So you have time on Sunday to fill up that <laughs> survey. They have time every day. It yeah. won't take long. <laughs> it won't take long. Yeah, and then tomorrow is Dia de los Muertos. Yes. And then um, bless all your my mom and dad, my aunt Maria, my sister. One day again. One one day we're all going to be there. Mm-hmm. And when you when you leave this thing called life or earth or whatever, what do you want? Do you want to be known for a community that didn't support their kids? That I voted no. Is that what you want to be known for? I voted no yeah. to, to to help kids in the classroom. Or do you want to be known for hey, you know what? I made a difference in, the, in these kids' lives. Now look at them now. When well, you're looking at heaven over. So, and then Lotto's husband, Mr. Peter, veteran, bless him. And a burger. Oh, burger. No, burger. <laughs> burger's not gone. Even though sometimes I, I curse. How many trick or treaters did you have? I had one. You had one? I had one trick or treat. I'm, I'm new to the district in, uh, in uh, Enchanted Hills. My block has maybe about six or seven occupied homes. So, and no, no street lights yet. I've got to call the city. What's going on no, over there? No one gave you a housewarming like cake or. Uh, well, I'm, I'm planning a housewarming, a housewarming uh, deal soon. No, for your neighbors, for your. Six oh, a welcome seven. wagon? No, no welcome wagon yet. No welcome mm-hmm. wagon. No. Uh-huh. Yeah. Because well, I have a, I have an empty, empty lot next to me, empty homes across from me, and I, have, I do have one neighbor, uh, but. The only welcome wagon I got was their dog in my front yard the other day. Uh, I had to go take it back. What kind of dog? A chihuahua. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't say much. I've got a little Boston Terror that is a terror. My mom and dad had a chihuahua. Pinto. 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 Was he? Two colors? Yeah. He looked like a pinto. Like the horse. You know, that black and white. Right. Pinto means spotted. Yeah. Was yeah. He, that was what means spotted? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But he looked like the horse. He did. Like, who's the horse on Lone Ranger? Tonto's horse. Tonto. Oh, it's called Pinto. Yeah, yes, yeah, so you're right. Right? Because he's spotted. He's spotted. Yeah. Ah. And, and speaking of, we're, it's Native American Heritage Month that we're celebrating as well. This uh, community is uh, a strong Native American yeah, heritage. The Zuni tribe right up the road. And the Tiwas down the down in the valley. So so happy uh, Native American Heritage Month to to everyone. And uh, we're gonna come back on tomorrow. Kids come back tomorrow, Doc. So Let's come back tomorrow, Thursday, Friday. We got um, football playing El Paso High. At La High. At La, is that what they call it? La High? They call it La High. Is that is that really haunted? I don't believe in that, so... They say it's haunted, right? I think so. Yeah. Is it? Yeah, it's just an old building. Uh, yeah, it looks like Gotham. Yeah, it's like, beautiful. Very, it's yeah, a beautiful school. It's a beautiful architecture. I mean, that's I mean that's a community that invested in its schools. They sure did. <laughs> they sure did. They said it's haunted. So. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. The high, the lady on the hill. That that's what they call it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Why the lady on the hill? Because it's on a hill, and it looks like a lady. Does it really? Yeah. I mean, it just looks like it's a beautiful school, so they call it the lady. Why can't a man be beautiful? Well, you know, that's that's see why that is, that's that's that sexist. Is, that that is sexist, but I don't make the rules, Doc. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wait, wait, what are they put in sandwiches? Bologna. Bologna. Bolognius. Hey, that's what they call it over there. All right, T- call what's that? The 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 dictionary.com. Webster. Webster. I, Create my new word, Bolognius. 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 That means you're following. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, don't be Bolognius, and uh, and please take the uh, the survey. Again, it's on our website, www.canotillo-isd.org, and click on the survey link. And uh, we will see you next week here in Canotillo Combos. Later. Go pack. Go.